Welcome to Unit 3, Video 1, Endothermic and Exothermic. By the end of this video, you should understand the difference between the system and the surroundings. You should understand the difference between endothermic and exothermic processes. And you should be able to identify a process as being endothermic or exothermic. Let's start by defining system and surroundings. The system is the part of the universe on which we choose to focus, and the surroundings is everything else in the universe. Take for example this beaker full of ice water. We can make a choice as to what our system is going to be, what part we're going to focus on. So let's say that we want to focus on the energy flowing into or out of the ice cubes. We can define the ice as our system. That means everything that isn't the ice is the surroundings. So the water, the beaker, the air, the table the beaker's sitting on, you, everything else that isn't the ice is the surroundings. We could also choose to look at the energy flowing into or out of the water and the ice in the beaker. That would make our system the ice and the water. In that case, our surroundings would be the beaker the air, the table, you, everything else that's not the ice and the water. So to a certain extent, the system is a matter of choice. The surroundings is just everything that isn't the system. The distinction between system and surroundings is important in when we try to understand the difference between endothermic and exothermic processes. In an endothermic process, energy flows from the surroundings into the system. Energy is entering the system, endo, to enter. This causes the system's temperature to increase and the surroundings temperature to decrease. An exothermic process is the exact opposite. Energy flows from the system to the surroundings. Energy is exiting the system, exo, to exit. Here, the system is cooling down and the surroundings are heating up. Looking at this diagrammatically, we can see on the left that an exothermic process has energy, as indicated by the red arrow, flowing out of the system and into the surroundings. This will cause the temperature of the system to decrease and the temperature of the surroundings to increase. On the right, our endothermic process has energy flowing from the surroundings to the system. This will cause the temperature of the system to increase and the temperature of the surroundings to decrease. Let's try classifying some common processes as endothermic or exothermic. Thinking about the first one, we have snow as our system and it's melting on a sidewalk. So we can represent our snow, or the system, and our sidewalk, the surroundings. In order for snow to melt, energy has to flow from the surroundings into the system. Energy has to be gained by the snow in order for it to melt. Since energy is entering the system, this is an endothermic process. Try the next four on your own. When you come back, I'll display the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Notice the burning match is exothermic because energy is leaving the match and going into the air around it, the surroundings. Cooking an egg is endothermic because you have to put energy into the egg in order to cook it. Water condensing on your bathroom mirror and making ice cubes are both, both exothermic processes because in both cases, energy must leave the water or the, uh, in order to turn it into uh, liquid water or solid water in the case of ice cubes. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's quickly review our goals. First, we looked at the difference between the system and the surroundings the system being what we want to focus on, and the surroundings being everything else. Then we looked at the difference between endothermic and exothermic processes. Endothermic processes are processes where energy enters the system. 
and exothermic processes are processes where energy exits the system. And finally, we looked at how to identify processes as being endothermic or exothermic.